yeah. What's up, YouTubers? Hardworker12 here. I have a 2004 Audi A4 Quattro 1.8T to show you today. This car belongs to a friend of mine. And it's pretty modified. We'll get into that in a minute. And you may ask, how do I know it's a 2004? Well, because it says so right there. Not sure why, but somebody uh, scratched that somehow into the paint. Clear coat on the hood has seen better days. But overall, the car's in pretty nice shape for being 15 years old with 149,000 miles on it. It's got some knockoff BBS wheels. It's got some got some tips in the back. Let's have a look under the hood. So this is the 1.8 liter turbo, five valves per cylinder on this engine in this uh, B6 Audi A4, and this one has been modified. Apparently, the engine has been completely rebuilt, um, new block, new heads. It has a really cool, I really like this. Apparently, that's an S XST turbo manifold and downpipe with a KO4 turbo. It does have the bigger turbo on it. Uh, you've got a cold air intake there, although... I don't know if you can even call that a cold air intake. That's picking up some pretty hot air. Cusco catch can. Apparently it has an upgraded serpentine belt to handle the additional power. Blow-off valve. ECS spacer with the 2.0T. Um, coil packs. So a lot of work done under the hood. Let's see how she sounds. a little bit about the interior on this car because it was always one of the strong suits on the vehicle when it was new. Uh, the quality of the materials, I mean, the dash has held up very, very well. No cracks or anything like you get in old Saab 900s. The quality of the plastics was very high. Um, this is a 1.8T Quattro with a six-speed manual transmission. So if you're going to tune one of these, this is definitely the one to do it with. Somebody decided to paint that black at some point. You have a little bit of bubbling on the paint. I'm sure you could take that off or replace it with a uh, part out of a junkyard from one that's been totaled. What I like about this car is it has no idea when it is. According to the aftermarket Blaupunkt radio, it's 1.41 p.m. on September 10th, 2014. And according to the car, still living in the past. 12.55 on February 16th, 2004. I have a beautiful color-changing boost gauge here, which serves a couple of purposes. Obviously, it gives you your uh, colors, and it also blocks this thing telling me what's wrong with the car. Oh, currently nothing's wrong except I think it thinks the gas cap is open. Sometimes it says the lights are out. Check engine light is on, of course. Why wouldn't it be? Oh, there we go. Left dip headlight. Funny thing is, the headlights actually work. I drove it home last night and they were both on, so I don't know what it's freaking out about. But the good news is, just keep the boost gauge in place and you don't have to worry about it. 
you got a little bit of fading on the buttons which is pretty common on these you're losing some of the uh, black stuff on there air conditioner still blows cold thank God that's a wonderful thing and you've got a little uh, dirt and grime here that might come off with a good detail but overall for a car with 149,000 miles on it that's 15 years old it's held up all right you've got a few squeaks and rattles of course but nothing major nothing uh, out of the ordinary for a vehicle of this age and especially one that's been tuned let's see what's in the glove box oh so what's this car like to drive not bad actually it's for sure way quicker than a stock 2004 A4 1.8T. The car I am... Probably should have been in first for that little curve. The car I compare it most to would be my daily driver. Here's a little blow-off valve there. Would be my daily driver, which is a 2017 WRX STI. Um, of course, any car that you drive that's not yours, you're going to compare it to your daily driver. But they have some things in common. All-wheel drive, six-speed manual, big old turbo, smaller four-door sedan. I would say this A4 is not quite as fast as my STI. I don't believe this car has been on a dyno but just strictly by my butt dyno, I'd say 260 is what I would guess for the horsepower, 260, 270, something like that. Um, probably a hundred, yeah, 100 more horsepower than a stock one, that's for sure. The ride is a little stiff, it has been lowered, but if you're just kind of cruising, it's comfortable enough, the handling's decent. Uh, the Quattro all-wheel drive system certainly works. The clutch is upgraded. I think it's got a stage, some kind of stage two, stage something clutch in it. Takes a little getting used to, but it's not bad. The shifter is just butter, butter. That actually, the the sh it shifts so nice. It's kind of surprising. It feels like one of these would have felt when it was basically new. Um, which is nice to have on a car that's been as modified as this one is. It'll miss a little bit at higher RPMs when you do a pull. I think it, the tune needs to be adjusted a little bit. Um, but with modified cars, they're never perfect. I mean, that's why they're just... It's not my cup of tea, but I could see why somebody would love this car and I could see the appeal. Um, comparing it to my STI, the STI was $39,000 at $39,236 or something was the MSRP on my car when it was brand new in 2017. Obviously a car like this would be a lot less expensive. Precisely one-tenth of the price of my STI. This car is actually for sale right now. If you're interested in buying it, put a comment below and I'll put you in touch with the seller. And it is for sale for $3,900, which is one-tenth of the price of my STI. And you're getting most of the performance, honestly. I mean, a few things need to be tweaked. Obviously, it's not a perfect car, but for one-tenth the price, the value is certainly there. I'm going to do something else with it, and this is going to happen later tonight, but through the magic of time, it's going to happen almost right now for you. I'm going to do a fuel economy test on this car. I have a fuel economy loop that I'm going to drive with it late at night when there's no traffic to see um, how the miles per gallon are. So we'll do that now. Let's check the fuel economy, and I'll be right back with you. So the footage that you're watching here is a time lapse of me driving through a fuel economy loop. It's about a 44 mile loop, uh, mostly highway. There is some kind of stoplight action, but I would say it's at least 70% highway as far as the miles go. 
And the first car that I ran through it was my 2013 Jetta Sport Wagon TDI to kind of set a, a high bar, um, which it did. The Jetta Sport Wagon TDI averaged 40.8 miles per gallon on this fuel economy loop. I expected this 2004 A4 with the KO4 turbo to be worse, and it was, um, but the A4 managed 27.1 miles per gallon, which interest, interestingly is spot on with what the car, the original Highway MPG rating from the EPA when the car was new is 27. So it nailed its 27 mile per gallon highway number. Uh, just to make it clear, I'm not hypermiling on these drives, but I'm also not driving aggressively, just trying to stick to the speed limit, no full throttle starts, you know, just kind of driving in a relaxed manner. And um, I plan on doing more of these reviews and um, getting more results from this exact same fuel economy loop, starting from the same gas station, fill it up, reset the trip computer, drive it, fill it back up, divide the miles by the gallons, that's how I do it. Uh, so I'm going to do more of these reviews and hopefully we'll get a nice long list of cars and see how they did on the fuel economy loop and see what we can learn from that. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. If you like the video, please like and subscribe. And thanks again for watching. Bye-bye.